Welcome back everybody to another watercolor tutorial. Today we're going to be painting this really moody forest landscape. My specialty, or what I really enjoy painting. Um, so we're going to start off with a mop brush. Um, I've linked the one that I use in the description of this video. But we're going to start off with just covering the entire piece of paper with a layer of water. Um, I found that cotton, 100% cotton paper, works best for these kinds of landscapes because it uh, holds water really, really well. It doesn't dry as quickly, um, and the watercolor spreads very, very beautifully on cotton paper as well. Um, so I think that's really needed for these kinds of paintings where we really want a misty, spooky, haunted, moody look. How many times did I just say moody? <laughs> Probably too many, but uh, you get my point. So if you have cotton paper, I would recommend using it for this um, for this painting. So just make sure that you've applied your um, layer quite evenly. Um, no. You don't want any water pooling anywhere, so I'm just going to make sure that there's enough water on here. Do, 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 do. Okay. Uh, so now we're just going to take um, a little bit of green mixed with a black. I'm going to take some of this green and we're just going to start by applying a wash to this whole whole entire painting. Typically I paint these landscape paintings in my sketchbook where this buckling thing isn't going on. Um, so if you have a solution for that, other than taping down the, the borders, which I also do often, let me know. So I can tell that my paper is already starting to dry a little bit. So we just want to make sure that the top portion of our wash is significantly lighter than the bottom. Um, and this is because the top is going to be our sky and the bottom is where we're going to have all of our pine trees coming from. So you can even keep that top portion white if you can. And then once you've got one layer, you can honestly just keep piling on the layers like so. And it's okay if this uh, doesn't look exactly how you want it to because we are going to let this dry so that we can apply another layer over top and then it'll appear much, much darker, much moodier, which is of course what we want. But I'm just gonna try to get it as dark as I can the first time around so that the, when we paint the second layer, it's much easier. I'm kind of painting it at a diagonal, I realize this, um, but I kind of like that. Makes it look a little bit more misty that way. And actually, before this dries, I'm going to go ahead and just paint in some pine trees here in the background. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit of green wash that down a little bit um, not 
too too much too much that's why it's good to have a little test strip actually um, see that's still way too dark I just have to keep watering it down hmm. I'm just gonna try a different brush here. There we go. So these trees that we're painting now in this first layer, they can be really, really, um, what's the word? imprecise I suppose because we just want there to be a very light uh, like, like there's barely a tree there just almost like a very light silhouette of a pine tree in the background and because it's still wet the background that is um, these super harsh lines that we're seeing when I initially painted on they'll sort of fade into the background but there will still be like the lightest little hint of a pine tree. Um, see how this one has almost completely faded into the background? That's that's what we want for this first layer. So just, um, you know, paint on a couple wherever you think they would look nice. And because I painted my painting sort of in a diagonal motion, the in my painting the trees i'm going to paint them much higher up here and much lower here so i'm just painting these few pine trees um on the lower side because i want i want them to be visible when barely visible that is when i'm painting the darker layers so see how all of these trees that i've painted they started out with these having these really harsh lines and they've slowly, slowly just faded into the background. Um, but you can still see that they're, that they're there and that they're meant to be pine trees. And that is exactly the look that we are going for. I'm almost happy with this first layer. And see, that's the beauty of cotton paper. It's still wet enough to paint these pine trees in so that they'll fade really nicely into, into the background. If you don't want to go through the process of making these super detailed, the other thing you can really easily do is just um, take a round brush and just kind of flick upwards like this. And that'll, because it'll fade into the rest of the painting, it'll just look like there are... Um, pine tree tops coming out uh, and it'll still it'll look really really nice uh, because it does fade into the background like you can barely see that these that these were incomplete pine trees okay I'm really happy with how this first layer looks so I'm just gonna let it dry and then we're going to do the same thing for the second layer Okay, so now that your first layer is completely dry, or mostly dry at least, mine's still a tiny bit damp, but that's okay, we are going to apply the second layer. So what I'm doing is I'm just, again, mixing my green with my black, but I'm not going to do wet on wet this time. Um, I am instead going to just apply a solid layer because I do want it to be as dark as possible and I'm just using my mop brush for this uh, because it's easier and it applies a much um, much more even layer of paint and we're just going to apply this to kind of the bottom portion because then we're going to fade it out again and create a gradient like we did the first time um, but we just want that bottom portion to be nice and dark. Okay, so now I'm going to slowly start making it 
a little bit lighter. As we move upwards, because we want, you know, some of our little trees to peek through that we painted in the first layer. That is still way too dark. Okay. My water is also very, it's not clear anymore, which is why um, I'm not painting on clear water. So you could see like our pine trees are basically not visible. Um, I am literally using water straight from the tap because I'm scared that this is going to dry too quickly. See, we want it to be definitely more like this side where we can still see some of the the trees underneath. So I'm just pulling water off now. The disaster has slightly been mitigated. It's okay because this side is going to be, um, the, like I said, the pine trees are going to be much higher, or they were supposed to be. Um, so it's not that big of a deal that we mostly covered them. Um, so now we just want to basically create a second layer of these pine trees across the side to match this uh, darkness of the, of the green mixed with the black. Um, so... We don't want them, to be, want them to be completely black, like black and green, because that's going to be the third layer. Um, so we can actually probably do something similar to that first time where I just kind of wisped a bunch of um, brush strokes upwards to create mock trees. And because it's wet, or it should be wet, it'll fade in. To the surroundings and look um, like real pine trees. At least that's the hope, right? <laughs> we can only hope that that's gonna happen. I'm just gonna maybe add a few details here. to help it along. gonna make this one a little bit more defined and by the way there are so many different ways to paint pine trees um, because there are so many pine trees there are so many spruce trees all, all of those uh, um, yeah there's just so many so I did a, a, a while ago, about a year ago, I released a little video tutorial on how to paint pine trees and four different kinds of techniques. And that has become my most popular video on this channel. Uh, so I really encourage you to look that one up if you're having difficulties painting trees or pine trees in general. Um, it's it's really not difficult to paint pine trees if you know what to look for and and what angles to paint certain things it's it's a really simple process and for example you just saw me in the first layer i did a, a very different technique i kind of swooped downwards like this 
but here you saw me sort of dab and the dabbing works a lot better in um, when we're painting on this on cotton paper and in general this sort of moody misty scene because it um, when you swoop downwards it tends to leave like a, a puddle of uh, watercolor on the end of each swoop so it doesn't really look like a pine tree it just kind of looks like branches with little blobs on them whereas this creates more of an, an abstract pine tree look which is what we're going for in this very moody landscape so I might do an updated uh, pine tree tutorial video um, perhaps now that I have a better filming setup I can actually do close-ups of what I'm doing but nonetheless I encourage you to check out that other video it's Apparently it's very helpful. A lot of people have commented that the that it really helped them out. So definitely go check it out. Oh, I really, actually, I really like that technique. Now that I saw myself do it, where you just kind of, actually, that is one of my techniques in that video, where you just zigzag back and forth. Um, but on this paper, it's really nice because it fades into the background, so you can't see these really harsh brush strokes. I really like that. Very much so. What I'm going to do now is let this dry a tiny bit more because right now it's still pretty damp and then we're going to apply a third layer and that's hopefully going to be the final layer. Alrighty, it is time for our final layer. So this one, you want to make it as pigmented as possible. So um, as little water as you possibly can without making it super difficult to spread the paint. I'm gonna leave a little space here um, and then later connect it just with water and that'll hopefully create a nice misty effect, but uh, I'm gonna do it here as well. We'll see what it looks like in the end. And this final layer, I mean, we're not going to be painting any more layers over top. So we really need to make sure that we, you know, blend them before, it, before they dry. Just quickly kind of slightly fade these out so that it's not a super harsh line. Sort of like that. Okay. 
So now that we're painting the final layer, uh, we can't really rely on the bleeding of the um, of the paper to help us kind of get rid of any imperfections. So we have to be a little bit careful with how we paint our pine trees on this last layer. So I'm just being a little more mindful of how I paint my pine trees here. And as you get thicker or down further, you can use a, a thicker and thicker brush. It'll make the process a lot easier because you won't have to reload the paint as often. So I do want to paint another one here. It's not going to be as high as the first one we painted. I am just going to paint this because it seems that my pine tree is a little bit darker than the background there. So I'm going to paint over that. I really like how that looks. Wowie. Okay, now I'm wondering, should I add something else or is it good how it is? Um, I think I am going to add a little accent there and maybe something coming here just because those areas look a little bit bare. So it's not going to be a full pine tree, or at least I'm not intending it to be. But what it actually turns out to be, we never know until it's finished. Um, this is a little tiny bit too wet. I didn't want it to be, I wanted to make it a really defined tree, but we make do. See, I sort of like that. That's really nice. It's just kind of the pop of the tree coming out there. I'm actually going to continue it here. Uh-oh, you know what I'm seeing? I'm seeing that cauliflower effect forming down here. Not good. So I'm going to drag out this watercolor a little bit. This is when a spritz bottle would really come in handy because then it gently wets the entire surface. I'm gonna just try something here. I'm kind of trying to prevent that cauliflower effect while creating like a misty look. 
just by dabbing some paper towel. I just don't want it to look too harsh. And then I'm just going to add one more little pine tree over here. Now I'm wondering if I should actually do the same thing down here. And then I can add even more. So I'm gonna just gently lift some of that off, some of the paint off. Mm, maybe one more here. Am I getting carried away? <laughs> I am going to paint one more right here because I think that would look nice. That is so mystical. Oh my goodness. I love how this ended up turning out. Okay, that's that's the tutorial for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I know it was a little all over the place, but that's how painting with me is. I just kind of improvise as I go. Um, that cauliflower effect and then me dabbing over it actually ended up working out really, really nicely. So um, definitely recommend doing that. Um, other than that, thank you so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel and I will see you in next week's tutorial.